Hello and welcome to another edition of Traveler's Stories. Join us again as Joseph Razmich, who goes by Journey Joe. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here again. For our viewers, Journey Joe recently took a seven-week Route 66 uh, road trip, and we are finishing up his uh, venture today. So bring us up to date where we ended up on our previous episode. Okay, I believe on my the previous episode we had um, we were we had passed through Flagstaff, Arizona. I think the last picture mm -hmm. we took was a diner in Flagstaff, and uh, yep. on my way to my next stop, which would have been Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I had it's not that far to go. Um, so I uh, took a little side trip here. I, this rock formation up ahead does have a name. I can't remember it, but um, when you get closer and you head up there, there's a place called Sky City. Uh, this is on Native American land, and uh, I decided to pay a visit. <clears throat> now, I was actually on a tour, although you can't see other people here. This town is <clears throat> uh, pretty much deserted, except for when they have their festivals and their you know, their mm -hmm. trade bazaars and stuff like that. But it's way up high on a mesa. And um, the place is, you know, several hundred years old and uh, kind of a sacred place to the Native Americans. And uh, So I took a tour. And then yeah. uh, I ended up in Santa Fe, New Mexico for the night. And if I didn't tell you this was a motel, would you know that this is a motel? No, I wouldn't have a clue. No. I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it almost looks like a strip mall. You can barely see the way mm -hmm. it's built. You can barely see the doors, you know, and you, mm -hmm. look, you look long enough. Yeah, you start seeing the doors. But I mean, everything in Santa Fe is, shall we say, exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this, so this was a very nice motel in Santa Fe that I stayed at and can't remember the name of it right now, but they had a nice fireplace. And, you know, in the, in one of the dining areas. And um, this is, okay, this is the little coffee shop that's associated with the motel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. yeah you go here and you get your breakfast. Good. Oh. Now, before we move on to this one, one of my favorite restaurants in Santa Fe, I can't remember the name of it, but it was on the i'm a southerner so i'm going to call it a square in the square in santa fe there was a really really old diner and on the ceiling had the tin um tiles did you happen to see that by any chance um more than likely i've been there although i can't quite picture it in my head right now because mm -hmm. you know, i've been the, yeah I, I actually where i was staying was what two or three blocks from the square Right. So, so something I else unique. That. Something else unique about Santa Fe is, I believe it's a Catholic church with a spiral staircase. That's going to have to be a story in itself someday. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I did. You know, did some walking around, did some shopping. Um, it was kind of chilly in Santa Fe, so. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. This, you know, it was one of those days when I was, you know, still kind of recovering from a little bit of illness. So not a whole lot mm -hmm. I remember, but it was a very nice day in right. Santa Fe. Yeah. My sister loves Santa Fe. Yeah. Okay. So tell us where we're at now. Okay. On our, so now we have crossed into Texas and I arrived at the Midpoint Cafe. I love eating there. They got fabulous pie. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she gave me a slice of pie for free. How nice. Yeah. Actually, I met the vice president of the Texas Route 66 Association in this restaurant. Yeah. Another shot of the same restaurant. Yeah. As you can see, it was closed except for Journey mm -hmm. Joe. Just happened to <laughs> be in the right place at the right time. Yep. So I sat there, shot the breeze with her, and had my pies. And then okay. my next stop for the next three nights was supposed to was planning to be three nights at an airbnb in amarillo in the old historic downtown section 
mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't even know existed. I thought all there was to Route 66 was uh, in Amarillo was the big Texan restaurant and the Cadillac Ranch. Right. But, you know, there's uh, there's another part to it. There's um, Old Sixth Street, which is where uh, Texas Ivy Antiques is located. This is Dora Moroni's place, but also on this section of Route 66, there is a really, really nice Airbnb, and uh, that's mm -hmm. what I booked for three nights. So I got there and um, parked my car, and then I decided I was going to walk out to the grocery store and get myself something to eat. Now, got to backtrack a little bit. Remember when I was in Seligman, Arizona, I got attacked by dogs, right? And yeah. Then when I was in Las Vegas. I got attacked by dogs. Yep. And I walked out the front door of this Airbnb to go to the grocery store. And here's a guy walking down the street with his dog, not on a leash. It just oh, scared, no. the, it scared the dickens out of me. And I'm like, what am I, you mm -hmm. know, why is this happening to me? Um, <laughs> yeah. So I had to wait until he left. And um, then I walked to the grocery store. And the grocery store was closed. It's six o'clock in the evening. The grocery store was oh. closed. And um, mm. so turn around, walk back to my uh, Airbnb. And there's another person walking their dog unleashed. And again, I have to stop. I have to cross the street. And I was just freaked out. I was totally freaked out about it. And this is one of the very few times in my life where I had to call an innkeeper and say, I'm sorry, I just can't stay here. So I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't stay there. And, uh, I stayed one night in Amarillo at, a I don't know, a Hampton Inn or someplace on the freeway, and, you know, mm -hmm. nothing special. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. then the next morning I, uh, packed up my bags and I came back to Amarillo and I spent a couple hours at Texas Ivy Antiques. You know, I've seen pictures of this place on Facebook, but I've never been here. So this is new to me. Let's yeah. See. So yeah, Dora I think took a picture of uh, my car and that's her MG behind my car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, a, so is that the yellow sign? Is that what it says? Texas, Texas Ivy? Ivy? Yes. If you remember, okay. um, Dora's had that place for a few years and hmm. they had a fire there about a year, year and a half ago. I don't know. Hmm. And uh, they have rebuilt it very nicely. Very nicely. Good. So, yeah. I, so is that Dora there then? Yeah, that's Dora and me. Okay. Just, you know, okay. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. resist that picture. Everybody gets their picture with <laughs> Dora there. Yep. No, I've never been there. Okay. So instead of dogs, we got a cat in this picture. Yeah, I figured I'd have better luck with cats than dogs. <laughs> going forward. So, you know, the cat looked friendly and didn't think he was going to attack me. So I just yep. I took a picture of him and, you know, <laughs> that was that. I think there's, there might be one more picture. Okay. So this is a, wow. this is a picture of uh, Texas Ivy antiques. And then as I was um, leaving Amarillo mm -hmm. eastbound out on route 66, the mural on the side of this building just caught my attention. Okay, now you got some patio time going on. Right. So my second night that I was supposed to be in Amarillo, but I decided not to stay there, I went back to McLean, Texas and the Cactus Inn. And this, okay. you know, out of my whole trip, this was, I'm going to have to say, right on par with the Rockwood Motor Court in Missouri as the mm. friendliest place I stayed at. Um, this is one sure. of the things that you live for when you stay at an old motor court like this is to, sh you know, yeah. you show up and, and you have the, you know, you have the banter session on the patio mm -hmm. at night. Um, yeah. I'll point uh, out, don't remember um, the three or four, well, three of the ladies there. I don't remember their names. Uh, the lady with the white top, um, that's, uh, Martha, she is the owner's mother. She just happened to be, uh, in town there with her daughter because her daughter, who you could see her black slacks and her one shoe there. Um, okay. she had a, some kind of a surgical procedure that day. So mom mm. was out there helping her out. 
So I got to meet all of them, and uh, I sat at that uh, empty rocking chair there, and we shot the breeze mm -hmm. into the night. So I had a very nice. So this night. is good. This is good information. So the Cactus Inn in McLean, Texas, that's a motor court you'd recommend? Yes, yes. Uh, as far as I know, it's the only, I think it's the only motor court in McLean, Texas. It's the only one. Okay. And, and then, of course, right next door to it is the, um, I think it's called the Red Rock Steakhouse or Supper Club, and the food there is oh. just awesome. It is good, awesome. Good, good. Good information. Okay, so this is um, this is the picture of the table in my room at the uh, Cactus Inn, and I took this picture because there's a couple of stickers on the table there, and if you look pretty closely, I'm guessing a lot of you could recognize who that is in the picture. That yeah, is Harley. Harley. Yeah, that's Harley. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. How we ended up there, he I don't know says he got poked at Cactus Inn, so you know. <laughs> Good for him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is okay, the room so I stayed at. Okay, yeah. then um, then the next uh, the next day I'm headed uh, eastbound on Texas in Texas and into Oklahoma. My next stop being Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, this is just a unannounced, unadvertised little windmill farm somewhere on the side of Route sixty six. Hmm. Uh, time to hmm. kill. It was a nice day, so I stopped to take a look. See, that's what's great about Route 66, being able to just drive along and you see yard art, you know, you just stop and take yeah. a look. Yeah, there's yeah. there's hundreds of places like this. You can't stop at mm -hmm. all of them. You never get anywhere, but yeah. I stopped mm -hmm. this one. I'm going to use your line. You don't get that on the interstate. So That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> and, so what uh, do we have here? This is, I'm st still at this windmill museum, but uh, I took a picture of this sign because it says Freeport, Illinois. And Freeport is uh, just outside of Chicago, which is very close to where I live. So oh, somehow cool. this right. sign got from Freeport, Illinois to here in Oklahoma okay. or Texas, whichever. No, this is, yeah, Oklahoma. And I just took this picture here uh, just because it is a, section of original Route 66 concrete. Uh, you know, those oh, slab that they poured mm -hmm. and they brought them in on trucks and they laid them in there. Well, there was one there. I just took a picture of it. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And now here we have a brick. Yeah. So um, we've crossed into Oklahoma and this is at the Round Barn. Um, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I know, I know Shelly Graham, I'm sure I've met her in person, but at least I know her from our Facebook groups and I was walking in there and I happened to see her picture on a brick. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> saw your picture, <laughs> saw your brick there. And so I took a picture of it. Okay. This would be just a little bit east of Pops then? Yes. Isn't that where the red barn is? I think it's east of Pops, a little, like a little northeast of Oklahoma City, if I remember right. Right, right. It's not very far from Pops mm -hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty picture. Oh, Pops is. Oh, yeah. Oh, now this yeah. here, doggone it, if I cannot remember where this is. I know it's in Oklahoma, and I know it's before Catoosa, but... I take this, I stop here and I take this picture because the, it's, that is the original concrete and it's just got this patina to it from the trees and the mm -hmm. leaves and it, and it's mm -hmm. in, it's in pristine condition. There's no cracks or chunks busted off or anything like that. And I'm sorry, I try to read that sign that I parked next to, but there's just not enough resolution in the camera. So it's somewhere, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's east or west of Tulsa, but. It's right. It's close to Catoosa. Well, maybe some of our viewers can comment on the location of this, because I'm pretty sure I've driven all or most of Route 66 in Oklahoma, and I don't recognize that. So maybe some of our viewers can post a comment as far as the location. OK, so I actually had to turn around to take this picture, right? I mean, I was headed eastbound going home. Right now, the car is facing westbound. 
So to find okay. this, you're on you're on a newly paved four lane divided section of Route 66 headed towards um, Tulsa, and it's one of those places where the road bears to the right, and then the old road goes straight into whatever town comes next. Okay. And, uh, All just, right. You know, it just kind of beckons with you know with the canopy of trees there and everything. Yeah. Just yeah, a nice place to stop and stretch your legs. Okay. All right. I think I recognize what's behind your car. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped at the Blue Whale at Catoosa to stretch mm -hmm. my legs again and take a few pictures. Anyway, I was the only one there when I showed up. It was a nice day. Well, mm -hmm. there is one other person mm -hmm. there. It, okay. was, uh, it was unpopulated. The gift, the gift shop and the little snack bar there was closed, but uh, I just took, kind of okay. took a walk around. One of those kind of, kind of a child. They could talk. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. a carousel or a merry-go-round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, we've so, moved to some other location here. Okay, so I didn't take any pictures when I stayed in Edmond, Oklahoma, but I did have a very nice time. Now, if you remember back that picture of the, you know, all the ladies sitting under the canopy shooting the breeze at um, right. the uh, Mc at the, at the cactus cactus. Inn. Uh, well, one of the ladies there, uh, Martha, who is uh, the owner's mother, she was in town to, you know, because her daughter had a surgery. And in conversation, hmm. I mentioned that yeah, my next stop is going to be in Edmond, Oklahoma. And she says, uh, I'm headed home tomorrow and I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. So we mutually agreed that uh, we would meet up for dinner the following night. So mm. uh, I went to mm -hmm. Edmond, Oklahoma. I got checked in. I got in touch with her and we met downtown Edmond and we had a very nice dinner and I made a new friend. And uh, that's the kind of experience you can only get in a vintage motor court sitting in yep. plastic metal chairs. You know, you just don't get that anywhere else. That's the magic. Right. You know? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning I checked out of there and my next stop, my next to last stop was Galena, Kansas. So this is an Airbnb. It's directly across the street from Aaron Perry's Gearhead Curios. I'm actually standing in oh. his parking lot taking this picture. So this, okay. this place here, it's called the Molly Retreat. It's um, you know, it's a it's a bar and a cafe or something like that. And then around the back mm -hmm. is where the uh, there's a one or two Airbnb rooms. And you know, this is probably the most beautiful surroundings I stayed in. It was just such a just a really beautiful place. The way it was laid okay. out, you know, long and long and narrow, and had a kitchen and everything. It was a very nice place. Very nice Good. place. And I spent, you know, my next day there just kind of mm -hmm. hanging around. And I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time shooting the breeze over at Gearhead Curios. Oh, okay. And while I was in Galena, I took a few pictures. Now, this this is the old railroad depot that uh, that is, uh, is now a Mexican restaurant. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that place in just a minute when we advance to the okay. next couple of slides. Um, okay. This is cars on the route. This is the right on the corner there. And when you enter Galena, Kansas, um, mm -hmm. it was closed when I was there. Uh, but, uh, you know, the cars were there to say hi to me. Yeah. It looks like tow maters sitting in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tow mater. And then <clears throat> the fire truck. I forgot what his name is. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then uh, right across the street from Cars on the Route, this is the very nicely restored brothel. It's called the Murder Crow, the Murder Crow Brothel, something like that. That's, it had the, the legend is that there was always a bunch of crows standing on the roof, and what do you call a bunch of crows? You call them a murder, right? So it's the murder. Yeah. Brothel. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the first few times I came by, this place was pretty run down. It has been very nicely restored. And if I'm not mm. mistaken, it might be an Airbnb now. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, if I remember right, it was right across the street from uh, where you were previously. Is that, is that right? Yes. We're still, yes, in, still in Galena. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. You know, and uh, I don't uh, recognize this place. Where are you uh, here? I don't recognize. Well, we're okay. So you have um, cars on the route here and the, the brothel, and that's where Route 66 turns mm -hmm. uh, from northbound to eastbound. So eastbound, mm -hmm. headed out of Galena, there's this place. And uh, so mm -hmm. there's a couple more, uh, you know, cars animation things there. And mm -hmm. if there used to be a giant here right out, right out front, and he got struck by lightning and he burned down just about a year ago. There's nothing left of them but two burnt boots. <laughs> I but, shouldn't yeah. laugh, but it sounds funny, you know, because, you know, as tall as they are, I guess it makes a good lightning rod. But, you know, it's sad that it happened, but yet I can't help it to chuckle a little bit. So, right, anyway, right. yeah. Now, is this the same location? Yes, this is the same location. And uh, I okay. did what they asked me was uh, took a picture of this. So if anyone wants to... Mm -hmm share their photos. That's where we share them. Kansas historic route 66. Good. Yeah. So I think there's probably one more picture of Galena. This is it. All right. <clears throat> this is on the, one of the corners, just as you start the, you know, the downtown section, <clears throat> obviously this is an old hotel. Now, years ago I was traveling through Galena and I stopped at that railroad museum, which is, you know, kind of on the westbound route out of town. I stopped right. there and the place was closed, but there was a fellow in the back garage there working on an old car. And we struck up a conversation with him and uh, he offered to take us for a little tour of the town. So we piled in his Model A and oh, he, took cool. for, he took us for a, a trip around the town. And I remember he pulled up to this place on the corner and he pointed to that portico, uh, those three portico windows up there. And mm -hmm. he said, that's where me and my wife spent my honeymoon. And I thought, oh, how wow. cool is that, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, he showed me all around the town. And then we got back to the museum and he goes, he says, uh-oh. I said, what's the matter? He says, um, I was supposed to take my wife out to lunch and I forgot. And there she's sitting right there. I said, oh, boy. I said, all right, I'll tell you what. You've put me and my partner here, my friend, in the back of your car, and you take us to whatever restaurant you want, and we will buy you lunch. So they, well, took, us to that, they took us to that Mexican restaurant in the railroad. Oh, show, and I okay. bought a lunch yeah. again. Well, it's good. another one of those magical things that you just can't get anywhere else. Right. If you're yeah. Open to it, well, that's cool. Happen, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good story. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. And, Looks like uh, you're at some kind of outdoor <laughs> event here. All right. So when I left Galena, Kansas, my next stop, uh, I, I'm sure I stopped somewhere in Missouri. I'm not sure where, but apparently I didn't take any pictures, so. Um, I stopped in Raleigh again, but I can't remember where I stayed and, uh, you know, it wasn't probably rained or something. Didn't, didn't have a whole mm -hmm. lot going on, but anyway, um, my last night was in Litchfield, Illinois. Okay. And, uh, it just so happened that my last night of my trip was the first night of the 2023 Missouri route 66 road tour. Mm. They started mm -hmm. in Litchfield, Illinois, with a stay at the Carlin Villa Motel and a um, and a night at the drive-in. So, okay. uh, so I booked my room at the Carlin Villa Motel, bought a nice t-shirt there, and mm -hmm. um, then I headed out here to the, uh, uh, you know, to the drive-in and got to sit next to Penny Black over there and mm -hmm. uh you know we waited for the sun to go down and the uh and the movies to start the movie was greece 
Oh, so, good. So yeah. Genuine, mm -hmm. the, this is the Litchfield Drive-In, right? It's right there just outside of town. Um, and uh, we Now, where is Litchfield? From, Litchfield. Like from St. Louis? Um, well, it's not that section. It's closer to Springfield, Illinois than it is St. Louis. It's okay. one of the first towns when you head um, south oh. out of Springfield, and you can either go straight mm -hmm. on the – Interstate 55 access mm -hmm. road, or you can kind of curve around on old in Illinois four, which goes through Staunton and Hamill mm -hmm. and a bunch of other towns. And then, and, and Litchfield. Yeah. I well, remember Litchfield where it is. is on 55, but Carlin Villa is on state road four. Okay. Okay. So this drive-in, was it a, a real drive-in, like a vintage one? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big, you know, big old mm. screen up there by the road and, and you pull mm -hmm. in, and it was a uh, motor tour event, so it was uh, so it was free. You know, got to go oh, in there nice. and sit down, mm -hmm. and um, so I look pretty comfortable in that picture, don't I? You do, yeah. Nice, that was nice evening. That was before the sun went down. This was one of those mm -hmm. nights where it got cold after the sun went down. Now, mind you, I'm you know I'm halfway gotten used to 100 degrees at night in Arizona, you know. So now here mm -hmm. I am in Illinois, and it, it got cold that night. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting colder and colder and colder. <laughs> and it got about halfway to three quarters through the movie, and I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to, <laughs> I want, you know, get in my car and warm up, you know, mm -hmm. get in the car, start mm -hmm. the car and warm up. But I couldn't do that because remember, Back when I was in Springfield, Missouri, and I blew up two mm -hmm. tires, and I got my four yeah. new tires, and when I got my car back from the tire place, the headlights were coming on automatically when I'd start the car at night. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I can't start the car in a drive-in because the lights are going to come on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I so just, you just suffered through it. Froze and I tried to endure it as long as I could. Finally, I says I can't take it anymore. I gotta leave. So, mm, you know, I, mm -hmm. I put you know packed my uh, chair there back in the trunk, and I get in my car. And of course, anybody who grew up in the drive-in era is supposed to know when you start your car in the drive-in, you don't turn the headlights on. Even when you're right. driving out, you just turn your parking lights on. Well, I had no mm -hmm. choice. The headlights turned themselves on. So the headlights come yeah. on. I'm trying to drive out there. I'm blinding all these people that are sitting in the roadway. And yeah. I was oh, I was so embarrassed. I said, when I get home, I'm getting this fixed. <laughs> you know, what are you going to okay. do? You got to travel with a sense yeah. of humor, right? Yeah, that's right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, so uh, was that pretty much the last stop then of your uh, seven-week road trip? Yeah, from there I went back to my motel room in uh, at Carlin Villa in Carlinville, Illinois, and mm -hmm. one last little treat. I got in my motel room and I hear a knock, knock, knock on the door, and it's the uh, proprietor of the motel, and he's got cookies for me. Oh, and good. Then, yeah, no, yeah, he, no he, dogs. He, yeah, no dogs, just no, cookies. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, Journey Joe, thanks so much for sharing your seven-week journey with us of Route 66. And before we wrap up, can you just share a few tips for our viewers? Sure, I can. Um, the biggest, most important thing I would want to share with you know Route 66 travelers is that the journey is the destination not necessarily the destination. I mean, you want to plan places to go and stuff like that, but the whole highway is a destination unto itself. You know, consequently, it doesn't matter where you are, how far you've traveled in a day, um, whether you end up in a city or a small town, um, a souvenir shop or a restaurant, anywhere or just on the side of the road, anywhere you go on Route 66, you are, there's a possibility that you'll find that magic that I find everywhere <laughs> I go. Um, just friendly people, fun, different experiences, some things to laugh about, some things to scratch your head, but it's the journey. It's just being there. 
one thing I did different on this trip that I kind of learned over the years and I put it into practice and I really liked it was I planned and did the best I could to stay at least two nights at every location where I stopped at. Now, some of those places I booked in advance, like on weekends and other places, I just, I just winged it like on weekdays when there's not that much going on. Uh, but you do two days, you get to move out of your suitcase and you get to walk. And there's so much of Route 66 that you can experience at a walk, right? You know, mm-hmm. the small towns, the big cities, you name it. Um, some places like McLean, Texas, you can walk the whole town in a day. And it's just part of the experience. You'll see things doing that that you would never, ever see, you know, anywhere else. Those are the two biggest things that, you know, that, uh, that I've learned over the years taking my Route 66 trips. Um, so, yeah, I, I took four weeks to get from Chicago to Santa Monica Pier. And I still, you know... Just barely, you know, I touched the surface here. I touched the surface there. But wherever I settled in, I had a great time. And, I, you know, I'll, the places I missed, well, I'll go there next time. There you go. Yep. And, you know, every state of Route 66 has so many positive points. And there are places where Route 66, quite frankly, doesn't exist anymore. And you do take an interstate for a short uh, period of time. And in those locations, I've seen this question on Facebook before. Do you see any reason for, especially for like foreign travelers that may not be accustomed, do you see any reason for travelers to get what I call a Pike Pass or an interstate pass for toll booths? Well, yes and no. I'll say this. On my trip from Chicago to Santa Monica Pier and back, I did not need to pay a toll anywhere. What about uh, seasons? You know, we got winter, spring, summer, fall. I know it's going to depend on what part of Route 66 you travel. Do you have a particular season that you like best? (sighs) Weather-wise, I think the best time is late spring, which would be, you know, May and June. Um, I'll say, uh, I remember one trip I was on, April 29th, I was in Missouri at the Hooker Cut in a snowstorm. This was on April the 29th, (laughs) headed to uh, Springfield, Missouri. Um, Mm -hmm. And then in August, I was in, um, you know, Arizona. And one day it was 116 degrees. And then the next day in Flagstaff, it's 52 and it's raining. Wow. Um, the farther west you go, the drier the climate is, and the drier the climate is, the faster it can change. Uh, and that's true out west in in any you know any any season of the year. Um, you can uh, encounter some horrendous blizzards when you're up in the high country in Arizona, Flagstaff, winds you know Winslow, those places, and you can mm-hmm. encounter you know. You can basically you can encounter snow just about anywhere on the route if you're going to go in the winter. Right. A lot of places close for the winter months or they have very truncated hours. Places, you know, you'll find like half a town is closed on Monday and Tuesday. And most of the places you're going to be able to stop and visit are going to be in the bigger cities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would I would do my my best time to go is, like I said, late spring. May and June, um, and uh, you know, late you know late summer, early fall, like like September, October. Um, mm-hmm. As May and June, that's basically that's after snow season and hopefully before tornado season. And yeah, then I- uh, you know, uh, September, October is you get a little bit of cooling down, you know, but you don't have the really bad weather yet. Right, I. I've always gone in, I believe we've always gone in September and never had any weather issues. I mean, there might be a little bit of a rain, but next year we're going to be taking a Route 66 trip in early May. So that's going to be a new experience for us. So um, and I think it's going to work out great. Oh, yeah. Um, you, uh, 
yeah, you just pay attention to the weather. I will. I do remember one time in um, it was sometime in May, and I'm listening to the weather and the tornado warnings start coming on oh, the uh, you know on the radio, and I could mm-hmm. see the darn thing coming at me. So I turned and I tried to run away from it, and I mm-hmm. it caught up to me, and mm-hmm. I uh, had to hide someplace because I knew it was going to be bad, and I mm-hmm. drove into this pole barn somebody's pole barn and i waited out a hailstorm underneath the metal roof and then mm. when i left i got stuck in the mud <laughs> and i wouldn't have minded if the guy the guy the owner came he could have thrown me in jail but he just hooked me up to his four-wheeler and pulled me out again <laughs> Man, those are the yeah. kinds of things, experience that you get you know it's just great what one more thing i wanted to i wanted to speak out about um oh okay about you know cities on Route 66. There's three oh, major mm-hmm. cities. There's Chicago, there's St. Louis, and there's Los Angeles. Um, there's a, a rumor, uh, whatever you want to call it, a feeling that American cities are dangerous, and I just do not find that to be the case. Um, you know, especially if you're on the Route 66 parts. You know. Um, you're going to be fine. Yeah, you got to have, a, you want your common sense, uh, just mm-hmm. like, you know, any, you know, anywhere else, you know, if you're driving out in the, you know, out in the country, you want to watch so you don't run into a, you know, a, a, a raccoon or a deer. <laughs> and, you know, when you're riding in the city and most likely you're going to be walking when you, you know, walking is pace in somewhere in a city because, you know, traffic can be pretty, can be pretty congested, but, uh, you know, you just you just keep your eyes open and be aware of your surroundings and you're going to be fine. Now, you know, if you want to go out drinking until two o'clock in the morning or, you know, try to do something, you know, some some illegal something illegal, then, yeah, you might get yourself in trouble. But right. for the most part, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, for the for, you know, 99 percent, I would say, you know, you're going to be fine in the city. Yeah, there's there's homeless people in the cities. Um for the most part, they're there, you know, they, they'll they ask you for some money. So one of the things I do is I go to the bank and I get a handful of half dollar coins and dollar coins. Hmm. And I carry those around with me. And um, you know what they say? One of them might be Jesus. There's a story in the Bible about stepping over the homeless guy. So, uh, you mm-hmm. know, give them a dollar, give them a half dollar. Yeah. The karma comes back to you, I promise. And, I like that. Know, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, okay. the, the cities are just as good, just as safe as the as the open road parts. Yeah. We've uh, we've been through all the cities and we've never experienced any problems. And just like everything in life, you got to use discretion and common sense. Well, uh, just thank you so much for sharing your seven week journey with us. And I really appreciate it and um, look forward to meeting you again sometime in the near future. Yes, sir. And thank you again so much for offering me this opportunity to share my experience. Um, I I just can't tell you what an honor. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. This is great. Yeah. Hopefully I can take another trip and we can talk about it again. That would be great. uh, Yeah. Great to see all of you. Hello to all my Route 66 (laughs) friends out there in Springfield, (laughs) Illinois and Springfield, Missouri and Lake Mm -hmm. Havasu City and uh, Seligman and everywhere else, Andorra, California, Gallup, New Mexico. Hi, everybody. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. And with that, we will wrap up. Thank you for joining us for Journey Joe's Traveling Route 66. I'd like to say thank you to our guests today. And also, I want to say thank you for watching my videos. Producing these videos is just my way of giving back to Route 66 and preserving this piece of Americana for the next generation. Now you can let me know that you appreciate these videos by just simply clicking on to this logo to subscribe to my channel. And of course, feel free to share these videos to your social media pages.